Hey guys, the model is now available for download. Look for the link in the description of this video. I went ahead and printed it out in blue so we could get a better idea of what everything looks like. I wouldn't recommend doing this whole machine in blue or any other color other than black. If you did choose to use a different color, um, these pieces here would need to be in black and probably the camera module. Everything else can be whatever color you like, but those will actually affect the image and affect the training. And it's really optimized right now for black. Anyhow, I wanted to take this thing apart, clean it up and put it together and, and see how this print works. Okay, I have this set up so it's looking over my shoulder and hopefully uh, this will work out, we'll see. So the first thing you can see in this print there's quite a bit of stringing that's just printer settings maybe the uh, temperature was too hot and i didn't have a high enough retraction not a big deal that comes right up comes right off but let's go ahead and take the first part off from the print and have a look so i'm just going to pull the hair aside so there is a section here the support section which we're going to have to break out So on the subject of printing this in a color other than black, um, if you were gonna do that, I would recommend you paint or use a Sharpie or blacken this inside surface as that's going to be visible in the camera pictures. All right, so see how well you can see that, but this is threaded in here. So we've got to get that cleaned up. We almost have it. There's a little bit more support kind of stuck in there. So on this piece, the other places where there's support is in this track here. That should come out pretty easy. And I'm just using a small flat screwdriver here for to kind of like a pry bar. Finally, originally this was a three-hole design, but now I'm only using the middle one. Should be able to pop that out. And that's all that's required of this piece. This is the main body, main housing. Later, we're gonna put the brass inserts into these holes. All right, so the pieces which go in these holes are the two jaws here, or the pushers, or the clamp, I don't know, I haven't named them, but you know, they kind of hold the piece together. This is like a piston. This is going to be spring loaded. So there are supports underneath these. We can just tear those off. Normally I print this in this orientation, but this time around, I thought I might get better results by printing it flat. So we'll see how that works out. All right, now the moment of truth to see how well this this fits in there. Oh, look at that. Perfect. You might have to work this in a little bit, but generally this clamp doesn't go much further back than that. That feels pretty smooth. All right, that's good. And then this one. Nice, nice and smooth. All right. 
Now the wheel, nothing to do on the wheel. And I print two of these because in my experience, they break. And I thought having two would give me a better chance to get one that didn't break on me. That's really just the material. Sometimes the PLA is too brittle for to flex. But let's see if we are going to be able to flex this around without breaking it. Yes, very nice. Okay. Not much to do on this piece other than get rid of the hairs. You know, I usually use a heat gun. We'll pull the obvious stuff off and then just hit it quick with a heat gun or a quick flame and it will get rid of any of those hairs. But this should fit on here. And remember we have a spring to attach on the back. We'll keep our extra arm just in case. All right, so what else is here? We have the two nozzles. I have one for nine millimeter and one for 223. Those, um, there's not much to do here. Actually, nothing on this one. So we can set that aside. This one does have a support line inside of it. Let's pop that out. This is the top housing. It sits up. Yeah, it sits up there like, like that, and it's got some support too. So we just break out the support. All right, then this should fit nicely in here. Yep, pretty tight. That's a tight fit. So generally I beefed this up here so that we can put uh, a brass insert in there, a threaded insert in there. This is going to be used to kind of tighten the height. This long funnel can be used for other cartridges, providing they're the same general diameter. Um, and so we would just adjust the height by tightening the screw here to give it the appropriate height where the top of the case was just above the end of that, um, the funnel top. All right, this is the mount and it does get brass inserts into these holes. So we'll clear those holes out. Some interesting pieces here. Usually this can be cleaned up with just a, if you can see that, but there's a funky line here and here. It doesn't matter much, but if I cared, I would just take a piece of sandpaper and I'm going to try to get rid of it. In this case, it doesn't affect anything. It's just cosmetics. But this is the pull mount and what happens is it's going to sit here on top of this guy like that we well, have bolts coming through okay the last piece before we do anything else is the camera and again I just printed this it's part of the 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 big model but I would actually split this out into a second model and print it in a different color unless you were going to do the whole thing in black so 
There's not much on this one. You do have to get rid of the support inside of it. I'll have a separate video on how to put the camera together with the wiring and the light. Uh, but for now, let's just clean it up a bit. And then there is a little hole here. I'll just push that through here. There we go. And then there's a lock net, and that should, if everything worked out, we should be able to thread that right on. Looks good. And then finally, there's the, the backing. Now, this part you might have to print separately as well. PLA is pretty brittle, and this design, I need to come up with a better design, but this design tends to break the hooks. So the idea was that you'd be able to snap it on that as the lid of course I put it on wrong but that's the problem so still working on that one it actually would clip on something like this I actually found that this if I print this in a sideways orientation versus flat it makes these hooks a little stronger and they don't break so they have more bend so the problem is you need quite a bit of support on that I probably will incorporate this into the model at some point to have this up on its side but depending on the type of material you use to print um, this probably isn't the best design it might be better just to get rid of those and have some sort of a corner screw or something Okay, I want to put this together a little bit. Um, the first thing I need to do is thread the end of this. I know I should probably put this in the model, but I haven't done that yet. So I just use, uh, this is a six millimeter die, and really just put some threading on it. Okay, we have our piece threaded. I don't know how well that's showing up on the camera. There we go. And we'll go ahead and slide that in. Oh, we need our spring. So, from the beauty of Amazon, a spring kit like this can be attained for about, I don't know, 10, 15 bucks. I'm gonna use one of these, which is 5.55 by 25 and one of these guys which is 9.1 by 34.9 so put that on there slide it through and then I have box of nuts. These are M6 hex. I just need two of those. Again, uh, Amazon is your friend here or eBay. Any kind of M6 nut would work. I put two because uh, I wanted to make them lock together so that they don't slip. I want that to come far as far forward as possible. So I'm just kind of twisting that nut until it touches. And we'll back off a turn or so like that. And I'll put the second nut behind it. Good. Nice. 
Then the other thing that's spring press spring loaded is this arm. So we'll take this this other spring that we pulled out and Actually, the easiest way to do this is to stick this here on the, I don't know if you can see, there's a little knob sticking up. I'll slide that up, then I'll hook it on, just pull it over to the, like, like so, and now I have, that part is completed. So we're probably gonna have to pull this up to get this one in, let's see. Now it looks like it will slip in, just barely. All right, and then finally, we've got to put our wheel and our motor on. Okay, so here's the motor and it's going to go up under something like that. For that, we have to put a flange on. This is a five millimeter flange. And they come in a bag. Well, <laughs> this set came in a bag, but I usually buy, buy them in sets of four or five. They're a little cheaper than trying to just buy one. So you might get five for 10 bucks and one is $5 anyway. And you'll use them again in the future. I also need the, the right length screw. These holes aren't super deep um, in the motor. You only get a few turns. So I'm looking for a screw that's just slightly longer than the thickness of the body. These holes are pretty tight on this print. Looks like they closed just a little bit. I could thread that through, but I do want to clean that up a bit. A couple things that I recommend having is like a chamfer type bit that will help you, um, you know, let these sink flush. Again, I probably should just add this to the print, but it's not there yet. And that only takes a second anyhow, if you happen to have that tool. The other thing I'm going to do is go ahead and just run a, a bit through there again. Just to make sure those holes are not overly tight. We should at this point be able to uh, screw that in. But before we do that, let's get this flange on. So it comes uh, with these tiny little Allen screws. Let's see if we can even see those. Those. <laughs> and it comes with a, a tool. So we have to thread those in. Ah, so it looks like this flange has a little, it's closed a little bit on the end. Well, that's fun, but I should be able to solve that with something like this. Ah, voila. sure the YouTube safety, safety Nazis will get me for that or half the stuff I do, but not super worried. And now I can put those screws in. So 
I just use a regular screwdriver. Cheating a little bit. I probably didn't chamfer those out enough, but that feels good. Now, this one I'll usually try to line up with the holes in the motor and then just press it on. <clears throat> so that one, one made me fight a bit. But we should now be able to slip this soap up and over. Ah! Remember that whole thing about printing two? Okay, finally, we're gonna put screws in the top. So again, I'm gonna use my chamfer tool. I'm gonna have to switch to the baby chamfer tool. set we only need to be a little thicker than um, than the wheel and I'm not gonna put all four in I'll just do two for now really it's just to keep the wheel from spinning on that shaft lined it up with the flange, then we should be in business. Okay, now we just have to put this arm back on carefully. And we should have pretty good representation of the machine. Last but not least, I want to go ahead and, and, and look at pressing in those inserts. So again, I'm, I'm going to chamfer just the holes here. Right. And then what we're going to do is, using a soldering iron, press in a brass insert if everything goes well this is an m3 insert i believe these also come in a in a kit something like this and i'm using m3 M365, these guys.
You don't want to press it too deep or uh, it'll bind into that track. Okay, if everything worked out right, that should still move pretty freely and we should have no binding. So it looks good. So I'm going to be using the, on this one, the M5. Actually, no, it's M587. That is what that looks like when it's done. So now I can put screws through and make a pretty tight connection between this top piece and those inserts. So the last piece we're going to add on is, is this one. I almost forgot. We have to do the inserts on this one. So pretty much the same, same insert we had over there. All right, good, so we have our insert there. I think you all get the idea on that one. And that's pretty much it. That's the mechanics of it. Now the last piece, oh, we forgot. Well, let's put that on. To do a little bit of cleanup, but all in all, it worked out pretty well. Um, I need to print or put my camera in. The camera is threaded, you know, it threads into this hole. Like I said, I have I've printed a black version of this, which I would use. I don't want my pictures to have a blue light, I want them to be surrounded by black. That way, I can detect the presence of the brass. And uh, anyway, you get the idea there. That threads down into this. We'll have a separate video on putting the camera together because there's some, there's a chip and then some soldering that we do and a, and a light mechanism. More on that later. But hopefully you enjoyed this video. Gives you an idea of what what's in store for you if you decide to print this out. Again, I recommend using black PETG. Um, or PLA, if you want to try it, PLA is a little easier to print. It won't be as durable. It won't last as long, but you know, it gives you the idea and you can always print it out again in uh, PETG once you get the PLA side working well. Uh, that's all I have at this point. And, uh, I just noticed that was a little loose. Yeah, there she is. Have a good day, y'all.